I'm going to start over. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Pathways presentation. This is uh, Mark Richards, um, a member of Quest and Valencia Toastmasters. And uh, this is March 20th, 2019. We're going to have a little presentation on Pathways. To give you an idea of who's speaking, Lilit Shalakian has been a Toastmasters member since 2009. And she accomplished her first DTM in 2017. Notice her first. She has been a district treasurer for two years in a row and currently is a president of Dynamic Speakers of Northridge Toastmasters Club, her home club, and the club that changed her life. She continues being an active member and an officer of a club because she has experienced true value in Toastmasters. She attributes her success today to joining Toastmasters and wants to see everyone benefit from it as much and more. So today, her goal is to make pathways simpler for you to navigate so you can take full advantage of it and grow through the process. Lilith, go for it. Yay. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining on this call. So today, uh, as you know, we're going to be talking about the pathways and we're going to be uh, learning how to navigate. My goal is to help you learn how to navigate. Can you all hear me clearly? Yes. 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 Okay. So before we mute everybody, the, the way we're going to structure this call is, first of all, I want to get to know all of you. So briefly, if you can go through, we're going to announce the name and then you introduce yourself. You will tell your name, which club you belong to. And if you're an officer, if you, I want to know what officer are you, if you're a base camp manager or not. And then um, also the last question, I would like to know how far in pathways are you so I can get, get an idea uh, where do you stand? What kind of questions you might have? Then we'll mute you all, and then I will go through a few areas on the website to show you how to navigate. And then at the end, we'll open up for Q&A. If you have any questions along the way, um, I'll ask you. There's a chat. There's a chat window that you can open up and type in questions. I'll try to read through it and answer the questions as I go along. And then at the end, there will be time for Q&A. So I want you to kind of hold on to your questions. Uh, because if we don't mute, it might get very noisy. We'll mute everybody uh, first while I'm going through it. Um, is that clear? Yes. Is everybody yes. good with that? Yes. 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 Awesome. So if you could just, like I said, tell us your name, what club you belong to, which, which club are you with, uh, what is your position if you're an officer, and how far are you in the pathway? So if you want to maybe start with Patty, I can see your screen is first. Patty, if you could introduce yourself. Uh, hi, my name is Patty. I belong to the uh, Hispanic Network. We're located in, in the Valley, and I already finished the, um, one, the book, but I haven't started Padways. I did the, just the... Um, icebreaker but i cannot navigate so i'm kind of stuck so okay I, yeah. so you you have done the assessment already you know which path you're doing you've yes. done the icebreaker and that's where yes. you stop okay yeah. Yeah. okay perfect thank, thank you, you so, so much patty and are you an officer or no uh i was last year i was the um, educational vp okay yeah not yeah. currently not currently, so you're not a base camp manager. Okay, no. perfect. Thank you so much, Patty. Thank, Thank you for you. introduction. Um, we have Edwin. Yeah, I've um, I started pathways a while ago. I've logged in and everything. I've done my first speech, the icebreaker. I did the second one, and then the third one I believe is supposed to be a repeat of the second one in taking into account the uh, advice you got back. Feedback. Yeah, feedback. Yeah. But I, did, I didn't do the third one uh, yet, so I'm stuck there. Okay, so you're that far. And I know Edwin is the founder of my home club, so oh, yeah, <laughs> I didn't I'm ask him which club he is. He's the founder of... Dynamic speech, speakers of Northridge, yes. Yes, yes, awesome. Thank you so much, Edwin. Good to have you on the call. Uh, we have next um, 818-398-2850. I don't see a name here. Um, who do we have on the hi. line? Uh, hi, this is Neela. And actually, uh, I am from the Agoda Articles uh, Toastmaster Club. And I uh -huh. am currently uh, working uh, as an officer. 
as well as okay. I am supporting. I'm the backup for VP of uh, uh, membership. Okay, VP of membership. Uh, VP of uh -huh. membership is generally not a base camp manager, so you do not do. Uh, you, you, you said you're two. You have two officer roles. Yeah, I'm in the officer role. That's right. Okay, VP of man, VP of membership, and what other role? That's all. I am the officer and supporting okay. the backup as a VP of uh, membership. And uh, okay. I actually joined the pathway program this couple of months back. And uh, I have given my icebreaker speech and one other speech. And uh, okay. I actually joined the leader, a dynamic leadership pathway. I don't know if that is correct for me, but I thought by looking at the content, I found that would be the best for my career to move forward to. So. Okay. And what was Perfect. your name again? Perfect. Okay. What, what was your name, name again? Neelam, again? Neelam and Aunt. Neela? Neelam. N as in Nancy, E as in Edward, E as in Edward, L as in Lauren, A as in Apple, M as in Mother. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Neelam. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for being on the call. Um, so you were, uh, there it is. I see your name right now. Okay, perfect. We have somebody 310-652-4903. Who do we have on the call? Yes, uh, this is John Conti. I'm a, John. I'm a Warner uh -huh. Brothers Toastmaster. I'm, okay. Uh, I, I just finished bronze. Um, and I, you have an option of going on with more manuals, and I decided to go pathways. But I don't know anything about pathways. Um, and I did my first icebreaker. That's okay. but I don't have any material, so I don't know anything about pathways. I just happened to do a, an icebreaker for pathways. Okay. So it means, um, have you done the assessment to decide which path? What I'm hearing is you have not done that. Correct? No. No. Okay. So you have not done assessment yet, but you've done the icebreaker. Correct. Okay. Got it. Thank you so much, John, for joining us on the call. Are you an officer? Do you, do you hold an officer position in the club? At one point, I've been with the club for about, I don't know, about eight years. Right yes. now, quite honest, we go maybe once. At one point in time, I was um, not right now, presently. Okay. I was a not right now. Not right now. Okay. May I make a point of, uh, may I make an interruption for a quick second here, Lilith? If we can sure, sure. with uh, this process, which is a wonderful thing to do, um, we have 24 participants right now. You will not have wow. any time to okay. speak. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, let's make very quick um, intros. Um, do you suggest we don't move forward with intros, Mark? I think we should no. just go ahead with your presentation. Okay, perfect. So in that case, since we have so many people online, thank you, Mark, for keeping an eye on that. I was not seeing how many members we have. So let me start. I kind of got an idea in general. Uh, Mark, if you could mute everyone, so that way we'll eliminate noise, and then I'll ask you, we'll start during the Q&A. Questions. As I said in the beginning, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through navigation of pathways. Please jot down your questions. There's a chat screen that's open. I'll try to keep my eye on that chat screen so I can um, answer the questions along the way. And I'm, I got an idea. Most of you have already done the assessment with, it, with one exception, which is fine. Um, I will um, show you how, where you need to go to do the assessment of how do you log into the pathways and as you know uh, most of you uh, that have been in the previous educational through Toastmasters we have manuals now we got to go to Toastmasters.org website so most of you I hope are familiar with Toastmasters.org website when you, when you're on a website when you log in and I'm going to go through show you my screen you'll see some it's going to look a little different because of my paths are different than yours but pretty much the idea visually you can see where you're logging in. So once you're logged in, you will select pathway. Um, <clears throat> and under pathways, you, if you have not for John or anybody else who have not done um, assessment yet, um, you would click choose a path. 
So once you choose a path, it will take you through doing assessment. It will ask you, it takes no more than 15 minutes as far as I remember, to go through Q&A. It asks you questions, you answer the questions, and based on your answers, um, the, path, the, the system recommends a path for you. There are 10 different paths in the system, and actually I have a couple of PDF files that I wanted to show you um, the path that you have. Um, I don't think I have it open right now. We'll, we'll open it up later. But it, th this grid is actually a very good document that shows all the paths right here and it shows all the projects within the path. It's very inclusive, it's tiny, too much information on this, on this document. But if anybody ever wants to, we can share that with you later on. But once you do the path, once you choose the path, you have 30 days actually, this is a by members in my club. Um, you have 30 days to change it. If you chose a path, it recommended you a path. You answer the question, it recommends a path. It gives you a screen that this is the path that's recommended to you. And if that's the path that you want to go on, you continue on the screen. You follow the prompt, select, and continue through the screen. Um, if that's not, if you look below where it's recommending for you the path, it will say choose a different path. So you would have an option in that moment to select a different path, or if you already selected it and within 30 days you want to change the path, you have an opportunity to do so as long as you have done only your icebreaker. Beyond level one, you cannot change the path. So it's within the 30 days, and um, technically speaking, you could just add a path. You're not going to be able to change it. You would be able to add a path. But if you want to change the existing path, it has to be done within 30 days by calling Toastmasters International. Um, so that's pretty much uh, general about the path. Um, there is a document, if anybody is interested, email me. Most of you have emailed me RSVP today. You have my information. If you're interested in getting that PDF file that I can forward to you so you can read through all the available paths, before you make that selection, that will be useful for you as well. But once you select the path, and most of you that I've already got to talk to have done an icebreaker, you've already selected a path, you've reached a point along the way that you just don't know where to go from there on. So that's where we're gonna go. So choose the path would be an option who hasn't done the assessment yet, but once you've already done the assessment and you have a path, you will be going to go to base camp. So if you see it's highlighted in blue here. Go to base camp. If anybody cannot see the screen or cannot hear anything, please feel free to um, add in the chat box. Type in your message in the chat box, please. And Mark, for some reason, I lost that chat box on my screen. Are you able to see the chat box? If anybody yes. Add yes. The... I can okay. see it so on you mine. let me know. I can see it on mine. Um, I'm not looking at your screen, so I don't know exactly what you're looking at. Okay, so if you see the chat box, if anybody posts anything that's urgently, they can't see the screen or they can't hear, can you please notify me? Yeah, and if you've made your screen full screen, if you've made the window full screen, uh -huh. that may be why you can't see it. Um, so don't make it. Oh, there it is, it popped back in. Okay, I have it back here. So I'm, I'm gonna be keeping my eye on that chat box. If you can't see for any reason the communication, you can't hear me, let me know. So on this screen, once you're uh, in the pathway, this is the screen you'll be seeing pretty much. Choose your path um, is an option for you to go, but at this point, I'm gonna speak as all of you have already chosen the path and you don't need to continue to path selection. What we're gonna be talking about is accessing my path at the base camp. So you see this middle box over here. This is what we're gonna be talking about. The navigator is actually a tool that you can, at your free time, go through this tool and launch the navigator and it gives you a guidance on how to navigate through the system. But I'm gonna give you a shortcut here. I'm gonna to explain to you how to without you having to go through the entire navigator. If you're a member of multiple clubs, you will notice that there's a drop down box here. This is the club that is uh, by default selected. If you're going to work with the different clubs, you would have to make a selection. I don't want to do that right now, but you would have to select and change the club and then click on go to base camp um, right here if you see that. Now, for multiple of you, I kept asking if you're a base camp manager, there are three officer positions that are base camp manager. Those are the president, VP of education, and the secretary. You do get access to a base camp manager page where you are able to approve a request from approval by other members. You have access to navigate through the, your club base camp manager. 
At this point, um, we're going to go to the base camp as you're a member and you're going to select and do your project. So once you click on the base camp, go to the base camp. Again, you'll see multiple screens. The, the number one today, I'm not going to overwhelm you with a lot of information to help you navigate through your speeches. This is what you really need to know. Educational transcript, access my path. This is where you would want to go. You could also actually scroll down further down and you will see your transcript here as well. So you can either click on this screen or you can open the curriculum from this screen. I'm currently in two paths, dynamic leadership, you can see it right here, and a presentation mastery, you can see it here. Or if you click on the uh, education transcript, access my path, you will, I will see the same thing. So whatever path you have selected, it will show up here. Um, and the, and the path, most of the members have one path. And if you choose to, you can have another path. Um, it is $20 to add another path, second path. And it, it, each additional path, it is $20. To complete the BTM within the new pathway system, you have to complete two different paths. You can work at two different paths simultaneously, or you can finish one path and then start another path. But in this case, I, I decided I want to work on two. It's totally your choice. Um, you don't have to work at two at the same time. So the, the views on the screen, once you click on, on the name of the path you have selected, it will take you to the screen that gives you a big picture about all the levels within this path. Every single path in, in Pathway has five different levels. Within those levels, there are different projects. However, every level, every, every path has five levels. And you will see description of level one. It gives you four different projects that it has here. Technically, it's three projects. And then there's the last one is the completion level, completion of that level. Then there's a level two. You can see there are three projects and a completion and so on. If you click on any of those, it opens up a description. For example, I clicked on deliver social speeches. speeches it gives me a description of that uh, project specifically. So remember the big picture, if you look at the flowchart as if it's a flowchart, there are 10 different paths. Within every path, there's five different levels. And within each level, there's multiple projects. So remember in terms of that, path, level, project. And these are different projects that it's showing you what are you working on. I'm going to go back out of the screen. <clears throat> I could go back out of it. OK, we're back to the screen. To open a curriculum, to go through, some of you said you've already done your icebreakers, and I'm not sure, this is one area that I'm noticing that a lot of members are not aware that they need to go back to the, the, to the page and they need to make sure they do the post-speech assessment to complete that project. And this is what I wanna show you right now. Once you click on open curriculum, it takes you to the next page and it shows you the level that you're on currently dynamic leadership path that I've selected, it shows you on this side of the screen and every single path has the same look to the screen. It has on the left, it has all five levels. It has a percentage indicator. So within that path, I have completed 20% of that path because I've already finished level one completed. You see the check mark and level two is currently in progress. If you click on whatever you've completed, you notice there's a check mark by every project in that level. That check mark allows you to know that you have completed and I go to level two. And you see accordingly the percentage are changing. This shows the percentage of completion within that level. Um, I'm sorry, within that path. If I click on level one, you notice here is the percentage that shows the percentage of the completion within the level. I finished everything in this level. So these two different areas that you're looking at the percentages of a completion. Now in level two, you notice all the projects are already allowing me to work with. The only time it does not allow you to move on to the next level is until you complete the icebreaker. Until you complete the icebreaker, you cannot see the rest of the project that you can, should move forward to. So make sure when you do the icebreaker, you come back and do the post assessment of your speech. Okay, so let's, let's go through this um, pop-up page. Uh, the second thing um, that I always tell everybody, so the first thing to remember that's very common that everybody forgets is do the post assessment. After you're done a speech in the club, come back to this page and assess yourself 
how do I feel? And most of the time the questions are, now that you've done the speech, how do you feel, how do you rate yourself on this skills that you were practicing? And once you do that, you will know that you're finished with it because the page will pop up, congratulations, you have completed um, this project within the level. Uh, the pop-up screen. Let's briefly talk about the pop-up screen. So you notice when I clicked on launch, this was a pop-up screen that came up. Uh, for those who have not been into the pathways yet, I want to make sure that you remember to enable the, uh, disable the pop-up blockers for Toastmasters International website. And the way to do that, depending on your browser, I did actually open up this page here. If you go to Toastmasters.org page and you just type pop-up, um, and it will give you to this, bring you to this pathways frequently asked questions. And you can scroll down. It, it tells you how to, um, let me see, pop up blockers. Why do I need to disable? It tells you why. And depending on the browser that you're using, it will give you instructions. So make sure you go and read the instructions to make sure you disable the pop up blocker for Toastmasters website. Because if you don't do that, you will never see this blocker. And this, this needs to open up for you to be able to go through the to go through the projects, to read the projects, to read description. That's number one, the pop-up blocker. Number two, every time this pop-up screen comes up, it needs to be maximized because there's so much more data around it that you're not seeing. So make sure you maximize. On Windows computers, it's this little square over here. On Apple computers, it's generally on the left side to maximize this page. And when you do that, notice how much more information you see. You can see this arrows that is allowing you to navigate between different pages within the project. You can also see on the bottom, there's a drop-down box that allows you to navigate through the project by just selecting different areas within that project. Like, for example, I talked about assess your skills after, and there's assess your skills before. For all of you who have done the icebreaker, um, you must have already gone through the steps. Hopefully you've gone through the steps, not just went out and do the icebreaker, but you need to go through the steps um, which if you're familiar with the older educational system, you already know that icebreaker is to introduce yourself to get to, for, for club to get to know you. So you might have not gone through the screen, but on this screen, you would have to assess your skills before, and then you come back and assess your skills after. Since I've already done my assessment, you see it gives me a feedback here before, this is how I rated myself after, this is how I rated myself. So you can actually navigate between the uh, between different screens within this project. Remember, I'm on level one in my path, which was the dynamic leadership, I believe, path I was looking at. So I'm within the level one, and this is the first project I'm looking at. When you're navigating through the screen, uh, make sure to recognize that you see this little dots over here. It shows you how many screens are going to be for you to navigate through over here. And then when you're navigating, you know right here, I'm sorry, I clicked, I was just telling you something to do and I did it wrong. When you see this dot on the screen, you need to navigate by clicking next instead of this arrow. When you click next, it gives you more options on the screen. Once you're done with it, you notice how the blue dot is moving through the screen. You, you know that you've completed, then you're moving to the next screen here. So there's a screen within a screen that you gotta make sure whenever you see this, you're navigating with this uh, buttons back and next buttons, and then you get out of it and navigate through it uh, by going back and forth. Um, actually on the bottom of the screen, I just remember there, it does tell you which uh, path you're working with. I'm a dynamic leadership icebreaker path. And, um, and also last thing on this page, direction. Some of the pages will pop up a direction for you that you can, this little tab directions will just automatically pop up, especially when you're doing uh, your speech assessment before you do the speech and the post assessment, it will automatically pop up and it will tell you uh, one stands for I need to learn more, five stands for proficiency. It gives you a direction. How are you going to grade yourself? I just don't remember currently what H stands for, but it gives you more directions. For example, before you complete the assignment, take a moment to read through questions on the screen. So it gives you more directions. Whenever you feel like lo you're lost, look for the directions under this tab. Okay, and then remember this little navigation over here that you can jump between the screens. So maximizing this, making sure the pop-up blockers are enabled, making sure whenever you see that pop-up screen, it's maximized. 
uh, making sure that you are able to see the drop down selection that you can go back and forth within this project and remembering to use your directions. Anytime you're lost on this page, you can re read for more directions. Um, multiple times, what I've also noticed, members are not seeing a pop-up blocker because it's, be, it's hiding behind the, the other browser screen that you have. So if you notice right here in the corner, I'm moving my mouse over here, there is a Mozilla sign and you see there's two pages to it. The one page is my main page that I had just opened right here. The second page is the uh, pop-up screen that I have maximized that is covering the main page. So make sure if you're not seeing this pop-up screen, number one, make sure that the pop-up blocker is enabled. Number two, make sure that it's not hiding behind your main screen. So this is what I wanted to talk about within um, how to navigate the project. Make sure the last thing on this page, make sure you come back and do your post assessment and see that congratulations page. Until you see that congratulations page, you have not completed that project and will not let you move forward if you're still on the icebreaker. Um, on these pages, um, you can actually print out some of the resources. As you know, uh, Toastmasters International has gone green, but some of us sometimes we still need to print out the resources. So you can actually print out the value. You, most of the clubs, in my club especially, we do not have an internet access and we do not do online evaluation. So our speakers print out their evaluation pages and they bring it to the uh, they bring it to the meeting for the evaluators to write on it. Um, you do not need to do anything with that page. You do not need to upload it anywhere. It's up to you what you do with it. I always recommend to have a binder. If you do a printout of the pages, have a binder and collect all the pages in it. So when, they, when it's needed, if somebody needs to look at it, most importantly, you need to look at the feedback so you can learn and take away from it. You will have it all in one place. But once you click on any of this, you can see it's a PDF file that pops open. This is the evaluation form that you can print out. Um, let me go back to this screen. You can actually print the entire project. Everything that you're reading on the screen, you can actually, the, you notice it's a 23 pages. You can actually print out this entire project, which has the feedback form in it, which has the pre-assessment, assessing your skills. You see this page? This was the assessment before the test. Uh, I'm sorry, before the speech. And then as you scroll down, you'll see the assessment that will pop up for you to do after the assessment. So there's a project checklist, evaluation form. Um, there's the worksheet that helps you prepare for your speech. And there must be, there's a past uh, assessment page as well. And I can't find it right now. But it all has everything inclusive in this PDF file. So if you ever want to, if you're more of a paper person, you can just say print my project and everything will be printed with it. Um, and also there's the outlines, the icebreaker speech outline worksheet that helps you organize your icebreaker. For every project, there is some kind of a worksheet that can help you organize that project and help you prepare for that speech. So it's up to you if you want to print it out, if you want to save it on the uh, in your uh, cloud base, on your hard drive, however you want to do it. So these are the resources that are available for you to print out or not. So um, one thing to remember, with pathways now, I'm going to close out of this screen and go back to the screen. Uh, with pathways, um, it's pretty much has gone to honor system because right now at this point, the VP of education doesn't have any books or any material to look back to to verify that you've completed the project before they can approve it. But once you do the post assessment for every project, there is going to be a message that's going to your base camp manager that says that so-and-so requested an approval of level completion. And once they approve it, the base camp manager approves it. That's when um, you are able to see, um, that's when you're able to move on to the next project. Um, let me just quickly read through the chat. I noticed that I have a couple of chats here. Um, where I need to attach the evaluation after my speech. You do not need to attach the evaluation to anywhere. It's for you. The system doesn't need the evaluation pages to be attached to it. Um, the TM website was always on my second monitor, so I'm good. Okay, Edwin, I'm glad you were able to see the uh, Toastmasters website. Um, Susan has a question for the evaluation. If the member posts the level and path of their speech on 
um, on the um, uh, free toast host by using the awesome drop down there. The speaker and his evaluator can access, uh, uh, access the evaluation form to be printed or access online. Yes, absolutely. Very good point. Yes, on the free toast host, for those who are using the agenda on the free toast host website, uh, Susan, thank you so much for that note. Um, there, is a, there is a button that once they select which speech that they're doing, there is the, um, there is the link that you can click on for evaluators to, to print out the evaluation pages. Um, it's based on every club besides how they do it. In our club, we ask speakers to make sure they bring their evaluation pages with them. Um, so that's perfect, Susan. Thank you for that note. I did my assessment. Patty says, I did my assessment. Does base camp coordinator need to approve it? I go, I got a congratulation. I'm still not allowed to go to the next level. Yes, this is to the point that your base camp manager is receiving an email. They have received an email that somebody is waiting for approval. So you need to talk to your either VP of education, your president, or your um, uh, secretary. One of them, the base camp managers, whoever on the call today is, if you're a base camp manager, even though it's three of you that are base camp manager, only one person gets that email. So go back, go either call Toastmaster International or go to check your records to find out which one of you is getting that email. They, I've called Toastmaster International and they said not, it's impossible to have all three of you receive the email. Only one person receives it. So find out from your club who receives that email. Um, so you can make sure you get that approval before you move forward because it will not allow um, um, it will not allow you to move on to the next project and that's what's stopping you most likely that because you can't see the next project okay thank you for those questions if anybody has any other things to add so make feel free to jump in um, working and completing on the projects we talked about it I'm just going to quickly go through my notes make sure I cover it all um, Make sure you remember the differences between path and a level and a project. So remember you're selecting one path or two paths. Most of the people work on two paths simultaneously. For those of you who have not selected the path yet, uh, Toastmaster International does have an uh, uh, option for you to select the printed path. You don't have to do it all online. There are limited paths available printed and they're $45. If you wanna select the printed path, um, you would have to go to, during the select your path stage, you would want to select that and see what projects, uh, what paths are available there. But remember, within each path, there are five different levels. Regardless of which path, online path is list that you're taking, there are five different levels. And within well, each level, there are multiple projects. Um, do, 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 uh, when all projects are checked, so we talked about that. What else did I need to cover? Base camp managers, remember one thing very important for base camp managers, for all of you that are officers and base camp managers, once that level is approved, it does not mean you have received um, the credit. The, the club has not received the credit. You need to go to club central. And as before, when we had to submit the educational award for CC, for CL, for advanced communicators, for advanced leader awards, whatever it was, you still need to go to the Toastmaster International Club Central and process that um, level completion, that educational award. So it's a two-step process now for our VP of Education, our president, and our secretaries. Remember that it's a two-step process. Once you get the approval, the member completes the speech, completes the project, they request for approval, you approve it at that stage, then you need to go into the central club central and, and file for educational awards. If you're a member of multiple clubs, if you have different clubs, you can actually request for level approval for one club, but submit educational for a different club. That's also available. That's also possible. You do not have to submit the educational award to one club, even though that club may be approved your level completion. So remember, those are the little different ways of doing it now. But once you get used to the system, remembering that it's a two-step process, um, it, it's not as um, it's not as hard. It's just learning this new system that makes it a little more complicated in the beginning. Um, remember for base camp uh, managers, this, this is specifically for base camp managers. When you receive that email and you log into the club central, you will see, and I'm gonna go, this, this uh, is gonna be for our base camp managers. I wanna go and show you how that, um, 
the screen that you're going to be seeing for base camp managers. Okay. One more time. I'm going to go on up here. Okay. Login as a base camp manager. That's where you would go. And you will see pending request screen. So when you click on pending requests, currently we don't have any requests pending. Our club right now doesn't have any names, but requested by, you will see a name, you will see the time date and all that. And under options, this is very important to remember. I wish we had some members requesting so you could clearly see. There's going to be a green check mark or red X. Be careful, make sure you you always click the green check mark to approve if you're approving it. Um, if for some reason you, you think they haven't completed, um, make sure you talk to them. But green check mark, because once you click the red X, um, it, it's, hard, it's, fix, it's doable to fix it. It's gonna take jumping through hoops and loops and you would have to call Toastmasters International to fix that. But you make sure you remember to click a, a green check mark on that screen to approve the level. Um, let me see, we have a couple of questions here. Okay, I will talk about the website, the evaluation pages can be printed. I'll show it's a free Toast Toast website for the club. Um, there's a free Toast Toast website that's available for all of the clubs. Not all of the clubs are using it. So if you do have a club website, that's the website we're talking about, free Toast Toast website. So, uh, Neelam, uh, I think you're asking that question. I'm not sure if your club has a website. If they do, that's where you would go to print it. Um, Susan um, has a comment. Uh, they suggest that each member complete one path before beginning another. Um, no, no, no. It's suggested you do complete it one path before beginning another. Uh, because you want to focus on one path, but you're allowed to work on multiple paths. It's your choice. There's, the system will not block you from doing that. Um, and, and I've seen, I have few members in our clubs, and a lot of times the members who, are, who already have their DTMs prior, who have already been part of uh, Toastmasters International for a while, those are the members that I see that work on multiple paths. So for your information, Susan, I believe, was the person who, yeah, Susan, um, you can work on two paths at the same time. It's recommended for new members, especially that are not familiar with the system, to work on one path, to focus on one path to make it easier for you. Uh, but you're definitely allowed to work on multiple paths. So I hope that answers your question. Um, any other questions? We're at 740. So remember the two-step process and remember there's a, it's an honor system. For now on, um, since we don't have the book, since we don't have the completion pages at the end of every book, uh, for some members who have been in the prior educational, through the prior educational path in Toastmasters, um, we, we trust our members to go through the steps, we, to go through the completion and do the speech and do the assessment and then request for the level approval. Unfortunately, there's no way for the system to otherwise to double check, do double check and triple check on that. It is whatever your club decides, if you want to have a way of knowing um, or asking. Uh, for members to show the evaluation pages, it's definitely up to any club that, how they want to do it. But there's no, it's an honor system totally. Uh, what does DTM stand for, Anna? It definitely, that's a great question. Um, thank you for asking that because uh, we tend to use the acronyms a lot, not realizing that a lot of new members don't know those acronyms. DTM is Distinguished Toastmaster. This is the ultimate goal in Toastmasters. Um, once you join Toastmasters, to complete the highest level, highest achievement is Distinguished Toastmasters. So if you want to achieve that level, you would need to finish two different paths to be able to achieve that level. I hope that answers your question. So it stands for Distinguished Toastmasters. And Susan, yes, I answered your question. Thank you. Distinguished Toastmaster, the letter M doesn't really stand for a word as, uh, yeah, exactly. That's a very good point, Susan. The M in DTM doesn't actually stand for anything. It's Distinguished Toastmaster, I guess. Um, th those are the questions. Now, quickly, I'm going to come out of the, we're going to go back out of the Base Camp Manager page. So remember, for all of you who are Base Camp Managers, this is the screen that you will be coming to for approval. If you receive a notification, so number one for you to verify who is getting those emails your president, your vice president, or your secretary. 
verify who's the person that's getting those emails and make sure they are really active and checking and following through with those because members are going to be locked out. Like earlier, I believe one of one of the members just mentioned that she finished the icebreaker, but she can't move on because their base camp manager hasn't approved yet. So if you're a base camp manager, remember that be, be conscious of it, that members cannot move forward if you don't approve it. So as soon as you receive an email, make sure you come to pending request page and make sure you select that. Um, hmm. Let me see if we have any other questions. We don't have questions on the chat. Um, we talked about um, completing your emails. Yes, go ahead. How about badges? Mention badges, what those are. Oh, the badges is basically, let me go out of that screen. Um, go back to the badges pages. Thank you. Oh, go to the base camp. Oh, you, you meant under the, no, oh, let me go back here. My badges. So every time you complete a level, is this what you were talking about, Mark? Just something, you know, they might wonder what it is. Yes, thank you so much, Mark. Um, so the badges is basically the, you, the badges that you receive. For example, here, the completion of level one. Here's the completion of level two. Different badges that you receive, depending on what you have completed. Uh, to be honest with you, I have not, it just shows you that I have two badges of level one. I've completed two level ones here. I've completed only one level two. So it show, it sh it's gonna be showing you um, the badges that you receive. Before we used to receive certificates in the in, in the mail after where we completed the level competent communicator, advanced communicator silver, advanced communicator bronze. Now we don't receive that anymore and shows as badges here. Okay. Um, uh, Patty, base manager, VP of education, VP of membership will have the access. Also, I'm not able to see which club I'm part of. Okay, so Neelam, when you're asking that question, this is basically referring to this page where you can see the, generally it will give you only your club if you don't, if you're not a member of multiple clubs, it's not gonna give you a drop down here. But this is where you should be seeing your uh, club name. Make sure that you're logged in, you know that you're logged in because your name will show up up there, but it should show it. If it doesn't, maybe if you wanna reach out to me separately, let me see if I can help you out with it. If not, maybe contact Toastmaster International. But by default, when you're logged in, because if you're an active member, you're allowed to log in. If you're logged in, it shows which club you belong to. So it automatically should show you that page. Okay, um, let me see if we have any other questions in the chat. I believe I answered everybody's questions. If I missed anybody's question, can you please copy paste it because I'm scrolling up and down and I don't see any questions that were not um, answered so far. Um, the Pathways is the best on computers and tablets. They're not well designed, they're not well compatible with smartphones yet, even though certain functionality of it, I have been able to use on the phone and it works pretty well, but it's, it's not designed yet for the smartphone functionality. Um, hmm. We went over the quick educational opening curriculum and um, I'm pretty much, I've gone through all of the information that I'm, I wanted to cover here. Um, there's a, the someone has done that level. Do we have to have an internet connection to log into the pad? That's one of the frequently asked questions that has been. Um, uh, if we don't have internet connectivity in the club, whatever club you belong to, if there's no connection to the internet, you will not be able to access, obviously, the base camp and any of the information here. And that's why in our club, especially, we, we have members bring their evaluation pages. It cannot be done online. Um, can I work on more than one path? We definitely discuss, discuss that already. You, yes, you can. Um, each additional path is twenty dollars, and but you only need two paths to complete the distinguished Toastmaster designation. So those are pretty much uh, th th that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover. If we want to maybe open up for Q and A, Mark. If anybody has any other questions that they can, um, if they want to ask or if they want to share. Um, anything that would be useful for them, we okay, can do that. Okay, everyone's on, everyone's on mute. If you're, uh, uh, just ask a question, and otherwise, please don't uh, speak or make erroneous noises. That would be helpful. Yes, yes thank you. 
We have 26 people on the call. So uh, if you have any questions specifically, anything else that's specific to you that I haven't covered, please let me know. Or anything that was useful that will help you move forward. At this point, do all of you feel like you can go to the next level? I have a question. Once you do the, sure. once you do the, <laughs> when you do the icebreaker, even though you don't have any, when you when you before you used to get manuals and they fill out the manuals. If you do an icebreaker before you paperwork. How do you document you did the icebreaker and what do you do when you did the icebreaker? Okay, so that's a very good question. Since you've already done the icebreaker, obviously you were familiar with the process. I would tell you to go through the process. Um, Mark, can you mute everyone for a second while I answer that question and then we'll unmute them again? Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So when you've done already the icebreaker, what I would recommend for you, go through your icebreaker project, read through the, pro I mean, there's, there's the instructions for you to read. Do the assessment post-assessment, and it will allow you to, do, to complete it. Um, if it doesn't, I've not done it that way. That's why I, I don't want to give you a wrong answer. I don't know if it allow you only do the post-assessment. It might ask you to do the pre-assessment as well. But definitely after the post-assessment, it will go to congratulations, you have completed level. So I would say go to the base camp, go to your path, whatever your path is, select that level one and read through the process, navigate through it with the forward and backwards uh, arrows and do the post-assessment and that way you will be complete with it. Does that answer your question, John? He's muted. Okay. Yeah, he's muted. Can you unmute just John for now? Yes, yeah, sure. Hold on one second. Okay. There you go, John. All right, thank you. No, again, um, you said go to, once you get the path, you'll get to an icebreaker and you'll just, uh, uh, <clears throat> so, so you do it all yourself. Uh, there's no education. No officers involved. No, uh, exactly. All right. Yeah, you do it yourself. Like you said, you have to go through the process. Officers do not get involved until you ask them for level approval. That's pretty much when the officers get involved. All right. Thank you. Okay. Sure, sure. My pleasure. This is, this is perfect. Anybody else has a question? Um, is there a way, like, if they can raise their hand and say, well, I have a question, you can unmute them specifically, or there's no way to do uh, there that? There is. Um, everyone, you have uh, the ability to, um, it's what's called raise a hand, and I'm not sure what, where it is on your screen. I apologize. I'm not looking at your screen. I have, a, uh, I have the host screen only here. But if you do that, we should be able to tell that you want to talk. You could also leave a, um, uh, something in the chat. Um, make a note in the chat. Okay. Okay. I don't, I don't see that. So maybe, maybe for next time we can uh, actually figure out how that works. That would be awesome if we can just have people ask, raise their hand and to ask a question. But um, for now, let's maybe unmute everyone until, so we don't waste time on trying to figure out. We have only 10 minutes. So I want to make sure that we cover everybody's questions if we, if we have any. Okay. Anybody everyone. else has any questions? Yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if one makes a mistake and it cannot be handled by the club, so we'll have to go to Toastmasters, call Toastmasters International to fix it. Generally, depending on the mistake that you make, uh, whatever the mistake is, um, I would say Toastmaster International would be the place to go to uh, to get that fixed. Whatever that it depends on the mistake. I don't know. Especially, for example, I know for sure if the base camp manager accidentally just rushing through it and clicked on the red X instead of green check mark they accidentally um, denied your level approval, then you definitely need to call Toastmaster International. There's no other way you can get it fixed. So again, it depends what is the mistake, uh, but generally I would say yes, you'll go to 90% of the time would be calling Toastmasters International. All right, this is John. <clears throat> you keep mentioning 
second base camp manager, is that someone within the club you're in, or is that extra outside the club you're in? No, it is within your club. Every club officers, the three club officers, have have that base camp manager capabilities. The the, the not capabilities, the responsibilities. Um, it's the president, VP of education, and the secretary. Those are the three officer positions that are base camp managers. They have access to go and do the approvals. They have access to uh, to work with go to the base camp manager area. Every club has their own base camp managers. Does that answer your question, John? Yes. One other question: If if I if you if, could you call the international like on the phone and say I'm having a problem, could you you know like a help number where you can call the international? Uh, oh, definitely. Toastmasters International phone number. Um, I don't have it with me handy right now. I can pull it out. You can definitely call them, um, and they will direct you whether it's educational question you have or it's the membership question you have. They're very helpful all the time. Um, if you have a question that nobody within the club can help you, uh, within the club or within the district, then definitely calling Toastmasters International. I have called them multiple different times for different reasons. They're absolutely helpful. They're very uh, prompt. They're very professional, and they're very friendly. So, if you yeah, if you're, you're coming... Uh -huh. If you go to the uh, homepage, Lilith. Yep. Okay, and I'll show everyone. Okay, now go to um, go to the the, the homepage, and under to see see where it says Toastmasters International. Click on that. Uh huh. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay, now see where it says Contact Us. Top. Okay, there, there you go. There you go. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Woohoo! There's a number. Yeah, I Thank have you, Mark. Question. Okay, Edwin, go hey. ahead. If you're a member of multiple clubs and you give speeches in different clubs, how do you manage the uh, evaluations and the reviews and which base, um, which base camp manager needs to approve it and things like that? Okay, this is a very, very good question. So, when you're going to, uh, Mark, can we mute everyone while I'm answering this question? Sure. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. So when you go to the base camp, this is the area realize that we need to make sure we are conscious about it and aware that if we have a member in the multiple clubs, when they submit a request for level approval, uh, we need to make sure that member wants to submit that educational award to our club instead of them wanting to submit it to a, a different club that they belong to. So when they, even if they submit a level approval to one club, it doesn't mean by automatically we shouldn't be assuming that they want to submit the educational. So when you go to this, again, when you're selecting the, which club you belong to and you're completing the project within that club, that level approval goes to that club. Um, as far as I know, both clubs should be receiving. This is an interesting question that I really would want to look into more because I wonder if both clubs receive the level approval or not. But whoever does, it doesn't matter as long as you as a member, number one, you want to communicate that to your base camp manager that make sure do not automatically submit an educational point on my behalf because I might want to give this points to a different club. And secondly, base camp managers want to communicate with your members uh, that you know the members are members of multiple clubs, make sure you communicate with them and find out do they want to submit the education to our club or to a different club. Remember, like I said, it's a two-step process. One is a level two going to club central and submitting the educate for educational work. That's the second step that I'm talking about. It really doesn't matter uh, which club approves it because the club doesn't get the point until the educational is submitted. So whichever club approves it, clicks that green check mark, does not make a difference. Which club submits for educational award, that's the club that receives the point that at the end, the DCP point goes on, on the record. Does that answer your question, Edwin? Awesome. Let me see if I can unmute. Yeah, I unmuted you. Okay, perfect. So, John, did I answer your question earlier? You were asking a question, and I think we're finished, but I just want to make sure we answered your question as well. I'm going to unmute you as well. 
Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, yes. Okay, awesome. Thank Does you. anybody else have any questions? Um, can you, okay, uh, Mark, can you please unmute everyone? Let's see if anybody else has any questions. Okay, hey, Lilith. Yes. Lilith? Yes, uh, I'm a club that that has about say four new members who have um, joined over the past six months, and, and members have uh, given their their icebreaker, and even in one case, uh, the first two speeches, because um, the the uh, base camp managers myself were on let's see how the system operated. Uh, you had to give them their credit for the icebreaker. My my question is, um, do we then the date that they did their speech and is backdate it, or is it best to just uh, you know put in as of as of now and then just start it from this point? Um, that's a very good question. So I want to make sure I heard you correct. Um, Mark, can we mute everyone and I will unmute the person who is asking the question? There we are. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. What is your name? I didn't, Royal. I didn't get you. Royal. Royal. Perfect. So I want to make sure I heard the question correct. So you had members, new members join the club and yes. um, they've done their icebreaker. So they're active members of a club. They've done an icebreaker, but they have not gone through a pathway yet. Okay, well, is, so they're doing the, the uh, speeches based on the pathways. What I'm saying is that, uh, is that their information hasn't been, been uh, say, entered into the system or anything, you know, and I have not approved anything. So, you know, so the uh, question is, with my newfound knowledge, do we, uh, do we uh, uh, put in the date that they, that they did their the icebreaker and, and to have them, you know, do their their pre-assessment and post-assessment and all that, uh, you know, as of the date that they actually did it, or or is it just date and we should just put in the dates now? Okay, I'm thinking through this question and I'm trying to visualize the process because I've been through this process already multiple times. The system, once they do the post-assessment, that's the date that the, the, the level approval goes out. So you're not literally putting any dates on it. It automatically, the system automatically puts the date on it. So I don't believe that's going to be an issue for you trying to figure out what date to put. The date will go on it the minute they do the post-assessment and says, congratulations, you've completed it. So you're not choosing a date um, unless they do that post-assessment. The system could, uh, considers it complete on that day. Do you see that? Does it make sense? Okay, everyone. Because in the... Uh, Lilith? Yeah. It's 8 yes. o'clock right now, and in, in deference to everyone's time, I wanted to uh, congrat thank you very much for your time and everyone, the 21 people who are have remained and stuck with with us through this uh, process. Uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, I would suggest that you contact Lilith directly. Um, everyone, uh, I believe you have, uh, did your information go out on the email, Lilith? Yes, yes, it did. So I believe everyone received the email and I've, I've received the, the RSVPs from 17 of you, so I know I've been in communication. If you have any other questions, Royal, I hope I answered that question for you. If you have any questions, further questions, feel free to contact me, email me, um, and I will try to respond to your questions and help you out. If I can, I'll direct you to who can. Okay. That sounds okay. good. Thank you so much, Lilith. It's been a pleasure, and I hope everyone got everything for, uh, out of this uh, presentation. Uh, good night, and uh, be well, and... Here's on your path to DTM. I hope everyone makes it in, a, in the time that you're interested in. And uh, good yeah. night and, and farewell. Good night. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for everyone. Bye-bye.